So I, on, in 1971, I was uh, almost, I was 14 and a half. Interestingly enough, like Annie Frank, you could say, Annie Frank's diary, she was said she was 14 and a half in the Second World War. Uh, but uh, I, I was um, 15, you could say almost 15, I would be 15 in August. Um, and uh, uh, in the January in 1971, I, I was studying at Holy Cross uh, School at, uh, in class 10. And my father was uh, a professor, uh, not a professor, a reader in English, but he was, in 1970, he was specially made, uh, uh, asked to take up the job of the provost because the departing provost, Dr. G.C. Depp, also a very renowned philosopher, uh, was had reached his retirement age. And, uh, and the vice chancellor at that time in Dhaka University was Abu Said Jodhri, who was in fact the first, uh, the second president of the Bangladesh, independent Bangladesh, and the first one after it became independent. Um, so um, I, and my father was, uh, and he were old class friends, in fact, in my Singh Zilla school. So he had, he asked for a favor for my father and my father said, my father was really a more, he was teaching English literature. He enjoyed his teaching very much and he would like to write something. He wasn't, he had served Jagunath Hall as a house tutor uh, in the 1950s to um, uh, early 1960s. And uh, so that, because of that experience, I suppose he was asked. So we had to move towards the campus and the campus was, um, uh, we didn't, uh, Dr. G.C. Deb was still, uh, residing in the official bungalow of the provost of Jagannath Hall. So we inhabited another flat just across the road from Jagannath Hall. Jagannath Hall is situated quite at a juncture because just very near it uh, is the central Shahid Minar where everyone used to go to um, you know, give oath, um, say their oaths and give allegiance to the independent of Bangladesh. And, uh, uh, and so it was also a monument for the martyred, um, the language martyrs of the country. Um, so when we, I will just, instead of going at the beginning, we all know the history and, uh, but let's go to 25th March when Operation Searchlight began. We had no notion that there was a tension in the air and there was tension that the civil disobedience movement called by uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was being uh, enacted in the, all of the country. Uh, students, professionals, even the police had given their allegiance to the civil disobedience movement. So um, it was getting very tense and there was a, a kind of a fear that the army, there will be an army crackdown but no one imagined what that crackdown would mean. Um, <clears throat> they would, uh, the, the army crackdown, we at the most, my father was asked to leave, but he said he cannot leave until the, there was a, even a single student in the campus, it was his duty to give him protection and to look after him. So he could not leave um, out of his own conscience. So we decided to stay where we were. And um, it, we, at the most, he said that they may, may come to arrest me. So he prepared us like that, that, you know, if someone comes and arrests me, go, you know, you, 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 he told my mother, you take Dola, that's my nickname, and uh, take her and um, go to friends who can help you. So, uh, but on the 25th of March at the night, there was, usually because of the civil disobedience movement and the call of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman to fight with and to prepare oneself for a war. Uh, so they, uh, so the students were doing that. In, each night they would be doing a march past, doing physical exercise to prepare themselves in whatever way they could. Um, <clears throat> on the, just after 11.30 at night, my father was still uh, examining his scripts and, um, and uh, I was almost asleep. So we heard a lot of gunfire and a um, huge amount of gunfire, unusual. Um, so we 
uh, my father asked us asked me to go and my mother to come and uh, sleep on the floor so that you no know, bullets would come and uh, you know flying across us and we waited there and then we my mother then peeped took a peep out of the curtain in the window and she saw a convoy of jeep coming in the outside the building in the outside our compound and then by a flick of a hand the chain that locked the gate was broken by them and then they all came in it was a three storied flat with two flats in each story um so each floor so we were on the ground floor so they started banging on the doors um and none none of the people in the other flats opened but my father said that we should open it but then we didn't we couldn't open it because they banged so hard that it was jammed so not knowing what to do we came back to the bedroom floor and was there and then suddenly our household help um said that uh, she was called because she was in the kitchen and then <clears throat> three army of uh, officers two one looked like an officer and the, another uh, two looked like soldiers three of them came in through the back uh, garden and uh, commanded my, our household help to open the door she had to and then he, they threw her outside she ran away and inside they came inside they came and they asked for the professor so it said in urdu where is the professor and my uh, mother went to my father saying that they've come to take you and my father said uh, father was in uh, his night clothes so he my mother handed him a punjabi uh, uh, um, shirt and then <clears throat> he he said uh, I, my mother went forward and uh, my asked them why do you want to take him where will you take him and they answered in urdu we'll take him and um, then he went uh, the officer went straight up to my father and said are you the professor my father said in english yes um and he said we'll have to take you uh and my father answered uh, why but they did not reply they took his hand and they took him outside to the back garden immediately as they were they were going to take him to the back garden there were other soldiers on the other side of the door a front door who were still banging hard and then my mother said look they bang they banging so hard why are they banging you have come and then um it's jammed we can't open it and then the guy shouted the name yakub um don't bang anymore i'm here and then he left with my father when he op he wrenched his hand and uh, took one wrench of his hand and the door opened and we saw that they were bringing down another person the head of department of statistics who was a muslim but uh, who was uh, who had another 16 year uh, um old uh, more than 16 year old uh, boys in his uh, family um extended family and all four of them were being um sort of uh being um you know dragged down the stairs while the family was trying to resist them uh by eight uh, uh by four uh, soldiers and then um my mother shouted that look they've taken my uh, husband uh, let let them go uh because or else they will uh, they will shoot you if you don't let them go they will come to arrest and we'll do something afterwards um but uh, if you resist now they will shoot you and then immediately i went to the phone to um uh, ask uh, uh, you know call my friends for example to tell them what's happening and once i took the phone it was completely dead the lines were cut i came back to report to my mother and my mother and as soon as i reported it we heard terrible eight shots we went into the front of the door which was still open and we saw the uh, munir zaman and his four uh, three family members all writhing in their own blood they were shot and one of them was spot dead um we just took it was we didn't know what to do so we uh we just took uh, what did whatever was possible which was take some water and some of them were groaning we tried to give them water but in the meantime 
the family, one of the family, uh, the woman came to my mother and said, look, they've taken your husband, they've shot your husband too. He's in front, he's calling out for you. So it was like our world collapsed. I, we took whatever water we could and we went through the backyard and we went in the front and we saw my father lying on the ground and in front of the house, the compound. And, in, and my father was um, totally conscious but he was totally paralyzed as well, waist downwards. He said um, that he was shot. Uh, he was uh, brought out uh, in, the, uh, in the open and uh, made to stand in one place. And the soldiers facing him, the officer asked him, what is your name? So he said his name, Jyoti Moy Kutta. And then he was asked his religion. And then my father, who actually is a humanist, but said Hindu, because he was Hindu by birth. So, at, and my father said that as soon as I said Hindu, there was an order to shoot and they shot, the two bullets struck me and one uh, hit him here at the nape of his neck and the other in his waist, which paralyzed him.